Well, hello, and thank you for joining me. I'm Dr. Robert Bartosh of Proactive Wellness and Injury Center, and I want to uh, congratulate you on making a quality decision because you've decided to sit down and allow me to share with you information that I know, if you act upon, will enable you and help you to achieve and enjoy the best performance of your life. And that was a quality decision that you made indeed. So in this presentation, what I'm going to do is to share with you some information about one of the most powerful, potent systems in the body, but nonetheless, it's one of the least uh, uh, known about or recognized, I should say, by many, many people. And this information, if, as I said, you act upon, will help you to optimize this, this very, very important system in your body. So without any further delay, as they say or do, we're going to go ahead and get into this. So first, I want to talk to you about the role of your lymphatic system, because the system, this system is, is a critical part of your immune system, believe it or not. It's a part of your immune system. And it plays a vital role in protecting you from illnesses, from disease causing inflammation, all kinds of things. In other words, your lymphatic system is, is basically the body's inner drainage system. It's like the sewer system in a city or something. And it's comprised of a network of blood vessels and lymph nodes and they're together, they carry fluids from tissues all from all around the body, and they go into the blood and vice versa. Now, the primary function of your lymph system is to protect your body against infections, it'll protect your body against bacteria, and it will even protect your body against the proliferation. It will engage in, in attempting to destroy cancer cells as well as to keep fluid, the fluid levels in your body balanced. So in order to better understand this, we need to know what parts uh, of the body make up the lymphatic system. So we're gonna discuss that right now because this system is made up of a network of, of lymphoid organs that include nodes and ducts and tissues and capillaries and also a network of lymphatic vessels. So just by what I've shared with you there, you can see or understand that it's a very, very complex system indeed. So here's a breakdown then uh, of the lymphatic network. As I said a few moments ago, it's made up or comprised of lymphatic vessels. Now these vessels are actually a system of vessels, a network of vessels that run throughout the body and it looks very much like your, your blood circulatory system. Then inside the vessels, you have lymph fluid. Now this fluid, it's a colorless um, fluid com uh, comprised of infection and bacteria fighting white blood cells. So this fluid has within it these cells that are, that are made up of white blood cells and they run throughout the body, throughout these vessels, and they fight any type of infection that's attempting to to develop in your body and or any bacteria that are attempting to invade your body. Then also you have the lymph nodes. Now these are small nodes within the network of, uh, of lymph vessels that are responsible for filtering infection and bacteria. So they're gonna filter out all of this uh, infectious material and these, these bacteria that the body is fighting against. And they also work to activate the production of antibodies in the blood. So these lymph nodes will help to produce the army, if you will, that's gonna fight against the bacteria and the infections. And the, this army, they're called antibodies, and they're gonna put them in the blood. And then you have the lymphoid organs. The primary organ of the lymph system is the thymus. And it's a gland that sits right behind your breastbone, your breastplate. You know, if you were to, to tap your fingers right in between your breast, that hard bone there, right in about the upper portion of it, that's where the thymus gland sits. And it's responsible for helping with what's called the production of T cells, T cells. And T cells are a type of white blood cell that's responsible for fighting bacteria and infection. So that's what the thymus is going to do. It's that gland behind the breastplate or the breastbone there, and it's going to produce a very specific type of cell that's called the T cell. 
It's a type of white blood cell, and its purpose is to fight off the bacteria and the infections, okay? And then you have the spleen. Now, it's an organ that's located in the, in the upper left part of your abdomen. Uh, so it's just beneath your rib cage there on the left side, if you were to tap yourself there. It's responsible for storing cells that work to filter the blood of infection and bacteria. So the spleen is this organ of filtration, if you will, and it's going to work to filter out the blood as the blood passes through it of all of the infected materials or the, the casualties, the, 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 the dead uh, infectious material and the dead bacteria. So it's gonna take it out of the blood there so that the blood is basically cleaned once again. And then also you have the tonsils and those uh, are located in the throat. These are glands right there at the, at the base of your chin or where the where the jawline meets the throat, I should say. And those tonsils are there to fight off pathogens that enter the body, especially through the nose and through the, through the mouth as well. Unfortunately, you know, many years ago, it was uh, considered a rite of passage to have your tonsils extracted whenever they became swollen a bit. And you know, when they're swollen, that's indicative of them just doing their jobs. But anyway, uh, I digress. We'll get on now to the lymphatic tissue. Now, the tissue of the bowel, believe it or not, it's down in the bowel. These produce cells that recognize these pathogens. Pathogens are, are enemies of the body. They enter in the cells that cause diseases, and the bowel produces cells that recognize these disease-causing pathogens, and it works to destroy them. Now you have the bone marrow, and that's a tissue that's found inside the bones, and it produces and uh, it produces and it defends cells that multiply and uh, migrate to the blood to fight the pathogens. So it's it's going to produce these defensive cells, and these defensive cells are going to multiply and they're going to be pushed off into the blood and that's going to also fight the pathogens. So again, you have the lymph vessels, you have the fluids, you have the nodes, the organs, which include the thymus and the spleen. You have, and the, uh, excuse me, lest I forget, also the, the, uh, the tonsils. And then you have the lymphatic tissue. That's the tissue of the bowel. And that produces these, uh, these cells that fight off the pathogens as well as the bone marrow. And that also produces these defensive cells that actually multiply and they migrate. They're pushed into the blood and they fight off the pathogens as well. So now that we have a basic idea and understanding of, uh, of, the, of the anatomy of the lymphatic system, let's look and see how the lymphatic system then works with all these things. Because your system then works, the lymphatic system works similarly as the blood that gets circulated throughout the, uh, throughout the body via the blood vessels, except instead of carrying blood, the lymphatic vessels carry that lymph fluid that I told you about that fights off the infections and the bacteria. It carries them through the lymph uh, vessels throughout the body. And the lymph then contains a very high number of these white blood cells and inside the lymph fluid, these white blood cells are called lymphocytes, and they work to target and to destroy uh, any of the damaged tissue or the abnormal cells from the body. That's their primary purpose. These are called lymphocytes, and they are in the lymphatic system flowing all throughout your body. Now, according to the Cancer Research Center in the United Kingdom, it works because as the blood circulates around the body, these fluids will leak out from the blood vessels into uh, other body tissues. And this fluid carries the food to the cells and bays the body tissues to form the tissue fluids. Now the fluid then collects the waste products, the bacteria, and the damaged cells, as well as any of the cancer cells that I talked about earlier. Then the fluid is gonna drain into the lymph system, and then the lymph is gonna flow through the lymph vessels into the lymph glands, and those glands are gonna then filter out any of the bacteria or the damaged cells. 
I know it sound, it's a lot there that goes on, but that's basically it in a nutshell. And once the lymph fluid is filtered, then the lymph is going to leave the glands and it's going to move into the larger lymphatic vessels, into the thoracic, that's the, the chest cavity, if you will. It's going to move into the thoracic duct, which is at the base of your neck. And then this lymph is going to be released back into the bloodstream. It's going to be free of any harmful infection or bacteria because it's been filtered and it's been cleaned once again. So the lymphatic system uh, is going to help uh, to, to, as I said, fight off the infection and the bacteria. And as I stated a few slides ago, it's also going to help to maintain the fluid balance within the body. So now, Let's focus on that since I mentioned it, on how it goes about maintaining your fluid balance here. Now the fluid that gets released from the blood vessels, it circulates throughout the body and it enters the surrounding tissues, as I said, in the previous cell. And if it were not for the, for the drainage provided by the lymphatic system, this fluid that's continually being leaked out would build up and up and up in the tissues, and it would cause swelling, enormous amounts or a great amount of swelling in the body if it's not changed. So the fluid loss then is approximately two liters every day. This fluid that's drained out of the blood uh, vessels into or around the surrounding tissues is about two liters a day. And if it weren't picked up by the lymph system, it would cause you to become dehydrated and, uh, and, 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 and eventually you, you would end up dying. So this uh, lymph system then is going to take it from the tissues, it's gonna clean it, and it's gonna recirculate it into the body. That's how the process works there. And I don't think that many people are, are actually aware of how the lymph system works to protect us. And, and uh, honestly, before I, I started studying the human body and that, I had no idea either. But that's how it maintains your fluid balance. It's going to go ahead and filter out all of this about approximately two liters a day. And then it's going to recirculate it then as clean, pure fluid once again to start the process all over again. So when we look at this now, when we have infections and bacteria, we're going to see then the basic causes then that result in the swelling of the lymph nodes. Now, you may in your life, may, you, may, you may have experienced swollen lymph nodes or two before, you know, uh, which present, and what, what happens is they present themselves as a, like a tender lump on your body that you feel maybe in the throat or under your arm or in the groin area. And what it does, it swells up and it will be very tender while it's present. And then, and then in a few days, it may retreat back to its small painless state soon afterwards. This is caused by a lymph node that's becoming inflamed as it's working to remove then the infection and the bacteria. A lot of people panic when this happens, but if they're in a healthy body, basically, and I know that sounds like a paradox, if it's swelling up and you're healthy, well, you actually are, because the body now is engaged in defending itself. The immune system is uh, aware of the bacteria, or this, in, these infections, these uh, infective types of cells that have invaded your body, and it's just going to work. So it's killing off uh, this bacteria or these dead cells, and it's holding it for a moment or for a while in these lymph nodes. And when it does it, the lymph node will then swell. And when it swells, it becomes, uh, of course, it becomes a bit tender and whatnot. But as I said, in a healthy body, it's going to go ahead and it's going to void that tissue. It's going to get rid of it. And then that lymph node is going to just re reduce in size and go back to what it was previously. And then that tenderness is going to, uh, it's going to go ahead and fade away. Now, in most cases, the inflammation, as I said, in the nodes is nothing more that, and than an indication that your lymph system is doing its job. However, I want you to understand this now. If you experience prolonged inflammation, and by prolonged, I would say anywhere uh, over three days worth of inflammation, that can sometimes be a sign of something that's much more serious that's developing in your body. So we wanna to listen to our body because they've been fearfully and wonderfully made. 
and they've been created to, to protect themselves. And that's what the body's engaged in doing. And it's always letting us, letting us know what's going on. Unfortunately, in our society, we have ignored many of the signs or the indicators that the body produces and convincing ourselves that hey, it's going to go away, it's going to go away. And, uh, and that time that we permit it to go away becomes longer and longer and longer until we adapt to the situation and we ignore it, no longer being aware of it, allowing this problem only to get worse and worse and worse. So again, if these lymph nodes, if you experience a swelling of a lymph node, and it's, um, it's going on longer than three or four days, and it's becoming a bit larger and more painful, then my recommendation to you is get getting to your medical practitioner as soon as you possibly can, because it could be, not saying that it is, but why take a chance when it comes to your health? It could be a sign of something much more serious, okay? And, and some of these more common diseases that affect the limb system, and, and you may be aware of these or may have heard of them, but some of them, uh, one of which is called a lymphoma, and it's actually a, now we're not talking about a lipoma, which is a fat cell, we're talking about a lymphoma. Uh, it's a type of cancer, and it starts in the lymph nodes, and it multiplies to form tumors that are capable of spreading to other parts of the body. So again, there's a possibility there. You want to be educated and you want to act upon this, this knowledge that I'm sharing with you today in a, in a practical manner, okay? Another type of, of disorder or disease is called Hodgkin's disease. You may have heard about that or know of people that have been diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease. That, that also is a cancer, but it's a cancer specifically of the lymphatic system that may have developed from previously from one of those lymphomas that allowed these uh, tumors, these, these nodes to multiply and form the tumors that spread to other areas of the, of the lymphatic system only to become Hodgkin's disease. Then there's also edema. Now edema, remember I told you that one of the functions of the lymph system is to balance the fluids of the body. Well, edema is basically water retention from a fluid buildup in the tissues that causes that swelling to occur. So that's indicating that there's a problem with your lymph system that needs to be dealt with. And then, of course, there's tonsillitis. That's the rite of passage. That, that's the name of the rite of passage that I mentioned a, a few moments ago, where the tonsils become uh, infected. They become swollen and inflamed to the point where, you know, the individual will go to the doctor and it usually leads to the tonsils being removed. And uh, anyway, that's, that's what that is. And then there's lymphadenitis. That's an inflammation of the lymph nodes that's caused by an infection of the tissue. And it's typically though, located in the throat. You see in this slide that I have here, this doctor that is uh, examining this individual, there are lymph chains or lymph nodes in, that, in, that, in a chain that's going down that portion where he's palpating, where he's touching. And if those, if he finds that those are uh, infected or inflamed, then he would, his diagnosis would be then lymphadenitis. And that's what it is. It's, a, it's a, an infection of that tissue that, again, typically in the throat area. Then also there is splenomegaly. Now, what that is, that's basically an enlarged spleen, which is caused by a viral infection. And it causes severe swelling that can lead to the rupture of the spleen. So when you have that discomfort over that left area in the abdominal area that I talked about a few moments ago, that's basically just below the rib cage on the left side, if, you, if it starts to become tender or you have a protrusion, a noticeable uh, swelling in that area, don't take a wait and see posture. Uh, when that happens, you really uh, should get yourself to your primary physician, to your doctor who is uh, giving you care, and let him or her know about it. 
okay? So now we're gonna move on and talk about the symptoms of lymphatic fatigue so that you can become aware of some of these things too so that you're not ignoring them and allowing them to continue and only worsen. Now, because there's many signs of lymphatic fatigue that point to uh, the congestion of the lymphatic system. And some of the symptoms now they include a bloating. If you get, uh, you know, a distension in that, especially over the spleen area, if you get swelling in your fingers. Now, remember, we're talking about edema. We're talking about the lymph system or, or its inability to balance the body fluids. It can result in swelling in your fingers. They become real thick and swollen, and they become hard to go ahead and flex or bend. Uh, brain fog, or you can have sinus infections. See, because again, the lymph system is part of the immune system. And if you're an individual that, that is experiencing chronic ongoing sinus infections, you might well look to that lymphatic system as the cause because that's what we want to do. Not just to deal with the, with the outward symptoms and the problems, but look to see where it's coming from, where it's being generated from. Uh, it can be, you can have uh, problems uh, with digestion, with the, the digestive issues. Remember, I told you in the bowels, it produces the cells that go ahead and, and fight these uh, pathogens as well. So again, a problem with the lymphatic system could result in digestive issues developing as well. Uh, chronic fatigue. I mean, you know, when your body is engaged in fighting an infection or a bacterial onslaught, it's using a lot of energy there. And you really, you don't feel like doing anything. You're just fatigued, you're weak. You kind of have that malaise that, that's ongoing. That can be a symptom of it. And, and then also because the lymphatic system is compromised and it's a, it's a critical or a paramount part of your immune system, you might uh, or know of someone that gets colds often. You know, they get a cold and they get over it for a few days and boom, they're right into another cold and it's just a, a repeat, ongoing and ongoing. Or, you know, when you wake in the morning, you feel sore and you feel stiff, you know, really uh, tight. And, you know, it's not because you rake leaves or shoveled snow or did any kind of chopping of wood or anything out of the ordinary. You just awaken every morning and you have that sore, stiff feeling when you wake up. Could be something uh, that's going on with the lymphatic system. Also, cold hands and cold feet. Because, well, I, I won't get into the reasons why, but again, you want to think about your lymphatic system, especially as I've gone through this list, if you're experiencing maybe one or two or three of these things concomitantly, you've got sinus infections, you've got, uh, you get colds off and you've got cold hands and feet and, you know, you just feel uh, stiff and sore in the morning. That would be, boy, those are a lot of indicators there that may be indicating that you indeed have a, a compromise or a problem with your lymphatic system. So now that we know what some of these things are, the question then presents itself, what can you do? Because I want to empower you to help you because it's your body, it's your health, and that's your responsibility. So I want to share with you what you can do to reduce the risks of this lymphatic fatigue, all right? So what we want to do then, we want to boost your immune system. We want to support the lymphatics because, you know, ignoring your health, especially the health of your lymphatic system, means that you're more than likely to deal with uh, common illnesses and even long-term health problems if this system or the problems with it are ignored. So I'm going to talk to you about, about different ways you can go ahead and boost your immune system by supporting that, a, a healthy lymphatic system, and some of which are going to be drinking plenty of water, uh, exercising, reducing stress, um, a, a process that's known as dry brushing, uh, your diet as well, and even dressing appropriately. So what I wanna do then, now that I've kind of uh, topically mentioned or briefly mentioned them, well, let's go ahead and, and dig a little deeper into each of those things separately. So you wanna keep the water coming, you know, the water all through the day. Now I'm not talking about jug, 
you know, chugging down a, a glass of water every 20 minutes or anything like that. But I am talking about sipping it throughout your day because water is a great life source and it's essential. It's, it's absolutely essential for proper lymph fluid movement in the body. And without it, that lymph, that body lymph that's in the body can slow down and it's gonna become sluggish, it's gonna become thick, and it's gonna allow the waste to sit in your body rather than being cleaned and flushed out. And that's all contingent upon the amount of water you have in your body. Everybody's need for water is gonna be different based on your body composition, your activity uh, levels as well. And so a good rule of thumb is, is to make sure that, um, one way is to make sure that when you urinate, when you look at your urine, it maintains a kind of a, like a light straw color. And it, when it does that, it's indicating that you have proper hydration. If it's real dense, if it's real dark, then you don't have enough water flowing through your body. So what we want to do is to, um, we want to reduce that density, that darkness, and we want to make certain that we're getting, you're getting enough water um, throughout your day. Now, if getting enough water is hard for you, you know, if you get tired of drinking water, because, you know, a lot of people today, they, they get bored with it. It's, you know, oh my gosh, I just get so tired of doing this over and over again. Well, we can spruce it up. You can add some lemons to your water. You can add berries to your water. You can add uh, um, cucumbers to your water even fresh mint, you know, to your water glass to enhance the flavor. And you don't have to do it all at once. You don't cram all of those things in your water all at once. But, you know, one day use cucumbers, another day use mint, another day use uh, berries, another day use lemons, another day use lime. And, and how you'll know if you're getting enough water, it's simply this equation that we've been using for many, many years. You take your body weight, you divide it by two, and that number you come up with is the amount of ounces of water that you'd want to start with in drinking a day. So, you know, we'll say that uh, a 120-pound individual, he or she is going to divide their weight. They're going to come up with 60. And that's the amount of ounces of water that he or she wants to drink throughout a day. Now, of course, if it's in the summertime and you're out there working hard in the yard or doing yard, whatever it might be, then you want to add a, a few more. Or if you're exercising at the gym and whatnot, then you want to certainly uh, add a few more ounces of water to that amount. That's just the basis. That's the, the, um, the baseline, if you will, from which you want to start. Again, you take your body weight, you divide it by two, and the number there that you come up with is the amount of ounces that you want to go ahead and drink a day. And that's going to help to... Uh, help your lymphatic flow each and every day. All right, so we talked about the water. Now, in order to increase the circulation, you're gonna do so by making moves. Now, understand that the circulatory system, that's the blood going throughout the body, it has, an, it has a pump that moves it through the body, that's the heart. But the lymphatic system relies almost entirely on the contraction of your muscles and joints to help it move through the body and also to remove the waste from the body. See, that's how it does so, through motion. And if, if it's overwhelmed, that system is not going to work well, and it may even clog up, believe it or not. And that would lead to diminished immunity. That's going to lead to fluid retention. That's going to uh, lead to increased pain throughout your body. Uh, fatty deposits in the body, it's going to make you sick and you're going to get sicker and sicker and sicker. Now, I understand that, um, you, you know, that when you don't feel well, you don't move much. I mean, that's kind of par for the course, if you will. But, you know, daily exercise is probably one of the most effective ways of speeding the lymphatic drainage up, just like this couple's doing here. And when you work out, it's going to increase the rate of, uh, of breathing also, which boosts your circulation. And that's going to encourage the fluid uh, intake. You know, you're going to drink more water. That's going to help to reduce the viscosity of the fluid, the lymph fluid uh, throughout the body, and it's going to increase its movement. Now, some of the best exercises 
to increase lymphatic drainage. You're going to be like running like this couple's doing here or just easy jogging or walking or even stretching. And, uh, you know, yoga is a nice thing too. Now, with, in our center, we deal with uh, quite a few patients that come to us that, uh, for uh, COPD, for pulmonary, uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, for congestive heart failure, for edema, for cellulitis, for those types of issues. They all, 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 they all involve the lymphatic system. And you know, some of these people, when they, when they get to us, they're not feeling so great. They've kind of exhausted everything before them, and now they're, they're to the point where, you know, they come to us as a, as a last straw, if you will. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm happy that they do that. But the point I'm trying to make is, you know, they're already in pain. They're already weakened. They're already, their lymphatic system is already gummed up or gooed up. So they're really in a mess. And, you know, the last thing they want to do or could do is go to a gym uh, to do an exercise. It's all they can do to move their body from uh, the bedroom to the kitchen and through their environment. That's how bad off they are. So what do we do? What do I do? I recommend to my patients, to those coming to us, is to get a little rebounder. It's a mini trampoline. I'm sure you're, you've seen them. And you get one of those and look, you don't even have to exert a lot of energy on them. You stand on the, on the thing in your stocking feet or in, in, your, in some nice flexible shoes like running shoes or tennis shoes, whatever you want to call them. And, and you just push down. And, and because of the, the return of the, of the mini tramp, it's going to push you up and you push down and it kind of rebounds you. That's what you're doing. So you're pushing down with your, with your front of your feet on it nice and gently, and you're basically bouncing on it. And you, once you get it going, it becomes easier and easier to keep it going. So you get it going, and, and what you want to do is to try to do this maybe um, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, maybe even a minute. And you do that, and you do it to the point where you're, you're pretty much exhausted or spent or just tired. You don't have to be totally exhausted where you collapse, but you're tired and you need a break. And so what you do is you just take a break and you stop. And then after you've recovered, after a few moments, then you can repeat that and then do that throughout the day. I would, you know, you can start out doing, oh, uh, a 30 second bounce and you rest for 30 seconds, do a 30 second bounce, rest for 30 seconds, do that maybe for three or four minutes in the morning, try to do it again at three or four minutes at some day uh, in early afternoon or early evening, and then try to do another two or three or four minutes in the, in the evening as well. And as you do that, you're going to be uh, removing, you're going to be uh, stimulating, stirring up that lymph system, and it's going to increase the circulation, which is going to clear out the garbage that your body's been trying to get rid of, and you're going to start feeling better. And as you start feeling better, remember, you're going to be drinking the water too, and we're going to add these other things. This is just one part of the recipe or puzzle, if you will. But as you start feeling better, then I would encourage you to do it more uh, and more by more, I mean, more aggressively and for longer periods of time. You can keep it at three times a day, but, you know, move up to doing it a minute, doing it for two minutes or three minutes or four minutes. And hey, I know it can get boring. So what I suggest my patients do or people that are, that are following our advice is put it in front of your TV and do it, you know, in front of the TV and watch one of your favorite shows, an educational program, an edifying program or whatever, or put in uh, one of your teaching tapes or your, your uh, music CDs. Oh, it's great to bounce to the rhythm of the, of the music that you like. You know, you go through it and I promise you when you do it, you kind of get lost in it. You, you're not even aware of yourself and you're just having a good time and also uh, not just having a good time, you are getting healthier by the moment. Very powerful thing to do, and I encourage you to uh, to try it out. I, I know you won't be disappointed. Now, another thing is to relieve the stress, because you've got to relieve the stress. I didn't say you've got to uh, get out of the stress. No, it, it's that's impossible to do in the world we live in. But what you want to try to do 
is to reduce the amount of stress that you carry. And, and that should be a priority, you know, uh, because what happens is, is between 75 and 90% of all doctor visits, believe it or not, are due to problems related to stress. Uh, the, the research that I've read is that uh, up to 92% of all diseases are stress-induced, regardless of whether it's a cold to cancer, to a strain or sprain, to a muscle, I mean, all of these things, all of diseases included, they initially, the seed that, that uh, produced it was none other than stress. And that includes the, the impairment, the damage to your lymphatic system as well. So some of the ways that you can reduce stress because you want to increase that lymphatic circulation is good posture. You ever see people when they don't feel well, they don't stand up straight. You know what I mean? They're kind of sludged. Oh, I feel miserable. Their head drops forward. Their shoulders are rounded. They're not breathing deeply. Look, practice good posture. Don't wait till you're sick to stand up straight, but every day practice good posture. That's going to increase the gravity uh, or, or help the gravitational pull on the body to get that circulation moving of the lymphatic system. And, and stretching every once in a while, just reach for the stars or, or you know, reach out in front of you or to the sides or overhead or something, or twist gently to the left or twist to the right. Just start stretching every once in a while, especially if you're a person that works at a desk. You gotta get up and you gotta move. And, and along with that, you want to start doing some breathing exercises. You know, the, the majority, the overwhelming majority of the population, we are shallow breathers, especially if you do a lot of sitting throughout the day. And think about it. You sit to eat, you sit to, to get to work, you sit at work, you sit to get home from work, you sit when you get home, and then to eat again, and then you sit in front of the TV or whatever. We do a lot of sitting, okay? That's the point. So what we want to do is we want to stand up and we want to take some deep breaths every once in a while. And I'm talking about maybe the count of four, you know, breathing the count of four or two or three in, in through the nose and then exhaling slowly out the mouth and then inhaling again through the nose and exhaling out the mouth. So you're really filling the lungs up and you're expanding. And even, even when you take that, that deep breath, hold it for a moment uh yeah just hold it for a moment and then just slowly blow it out and, and i mentioned before yoga you know and pilates what whatever you enjoy doing in that respect start doing it okay so now that i've, I've hit on that let let me share with you some breathing exercises that you can do because you know i think it's new to most people and and it's very very powerful in relieving the stress that you're under each and every day. So, you know, before you get started with any of these breathing techniques, you know, I, it's going to be essential to prepare yourself with a few relaxed breaths before and after each exercise. You know what I mean? It's like warming up before you do a workout. So that's what you want to do. You want to just take a few relaxed breaths before you start. And you can do it by, you know, 30 seconds at a time you know, before you're ready to get into the breathing exercises, okay? And one thing that you can do after you've taken a few deep breaths, you can go ahead and um, you're gonna be inhaling and exhaling through your nose, just the nose and the nose only. And you're gonna drag the breath along your throat and it creates like a, a hissing sound. You can feel it in the back of your throat there as you breathe in through the nose. And then you make each inhale and exhale even. So you can count two in and two out. Two in and two out. And then as you do that, you might be able to increase it to three in and three out, or four in and four out. You know, a counted inhale and a, and a, and a counted exhale. Just do it to the point where you feel comfortable in doing it. Then there's another thing you can do. You can make fists and raise your hands skyward as you're doing this. You know, you inhale through the mouth 
and you exhale out the mouth and you bring your as you're as you're inhaling you raising your hands with your fists clenched up over your head as you inhale and then as you exhale you're going to bring your elbows down to your side so you know you're just kind of as you bring your elbows down you're kind of making a forced effort there it's compressing your diaphragm or the arms to each side and you're releasing then all of that air out of your diaphragm and then another thing you can do is you can place uh, one hand on your chest and the other hand on your navel yeah you know your belly button okay so you place a hand on your chest place your other hand on your belly button and you inhale into your chest and you feel, you, you start to feel up, or fill up, I should say, your upper abdomen. And finally, you puff out in uh, your belly as well. You want to fill that whole thing up. And then you want to go ahead and you want to work backwards there from your belly. You're going to exhale from the belly while the chest is still kind of full. And then you want to exhale out of the chest. Or if you want to get fancy, and these are just some ideas, you know, you can mix it up. You can close off like you can compress one nostril like this young lady's doing in the slide. And then you can breathe in through the other nostril and then breathe out through the mouth or breathe out through the nostril too. So do that five or six times on the right and then, then five or six times on the left. There's a lot of ways. Be inventive, you know, and uh, mix them up. But that breathing is definitely going to help you to relieve the effects of stress on your body. And it's going to help that lymphatic system work much more efficiently. All right, great. Now that we've relieved that stress, now we're going to move on to brushing away your toxins. Brushing away your toxins. This is called dry brushing. This is dry brushing, and it actually aids in the removal of the toxins that have built up on your skin or just beneath the surface of the skin. And it's going to involve this, this coarse, soft bristled brush to gently be moved along your skin in the direction of your heart. So this is going to boost your lymph flow, and it's going to stimulate the sweat glands, and it's going to support the circulation underneath the skin. Now, you can get these kits online uh, or you can get them at your box stores or your mart stores, wherever. And it usually includes, you know, that, that larger brush like the one you see here in my slide, then a couple smaller brushes as well. Um, and you look for a kit that has natural fibers when you're, when you're shopping for this dry brush kit. Uh, and like I said, you can find them almost anywhere. And once you have yours, this is the method you, you want to, try this method then to get the softest smoothest skin i promise you it's going to result in that you're going to exfoliate the surface of the skin getting off all of those dried dead cells from your skin and you're going to stimulate that lymphatic flow okay so what you're going to want to do is you, you want to start at your feet when you do this and you're going to brush up in an upward motion and you're going to cover each section of your leg with like 10 long smooth strokes. So you're going to start at the foot or the feet and you're going to brush up to the knee all over that lower leg nice and slowly. Remember you're always brushing in the direction of your heart. So that means you start at the foot, you go up to the knee. When you reach the knee you're going to lift the brush off of yourself and then put it back onto the foot and start all over again 10 strokes upward to the heart okay that's what you want to do you're going to cover that area nice and smooth strokes because that's going to activate your lymphatic system all right and make sure all of those strokes are going toward the heart because that's where the main uh Oh, the main portion of your lymphatic system is, uh, is residing. It's across your chest area. So that's where we want to go ahead. It's like pushing the, the water that's leaked in your basement toward the drain. You're going to be pushing this stuff toward the drain. All right, that's, that's an easy way to do it. And you want to repeat this here uh, as you go up to the thighs. You're going to go ahead and do that from the knee up to your groin area. 
and, you know, up over the buttocks to the base of the back, the front of the legs, the back of the legs. And then when you do that, you can repeat this with the arms. You're going to start, of course, at the hands, just like you did with the feet. And you're going to move upward towards your shoulders. You're going to do it again about 10 times, both arms. And then you're going to do your torso. That means your abdominal area from um, your uh, just below your umbilicus, your navel, your belly button. You're going to go ahead and push it up to your chest about 10 times. You're going to push it on the side to your underarms. And then you can even brush this now in a, in a kind of a clockwise motion as you're doing that as well. You can get fancy in this area, you know, kind of stir it up a little bit just because of the muscles, but you're always doing this toward the heart, okay? Now, if you do it too hard, that can cause your skin to turn red or to sting, and I don't want, to, I don't want you to do that. Remember, your strokes should always be nice and smooth, and they should be soft, all right? And if it gets, if you feel that it's uncomfortable for you to do it, then your body's telling you that, hey, sweetheart, you're doing it too hard, all right? Because you want to benefit the body, you don't want to damage or hurt the body. So you do this by dry brushing. And then also getting cozy to stimulate your system. That's, a, that's it's, you know, according to functional diagnostic nutrition, uh, clothing that's tight fitting can reduce circulation throughout the body. You know, you got these elastic uh, bands or whatever they are that are in some parts of clothing around the ankles or around the wrist. And, you know, when you take that clothing off, you can see those in inundations in the in the wrist or in the ankles and that that's too tight too tight you don't want that because that can actually reduce and restrict the movement of the lymphatic system and that's going to prevent your body from detoxifying that means you're going to have that stuff that junk that garbage that infection those dead bacteria staying inside of you and look uh, i have to mention too the bras or tight fitting underwear that can also constrict the flow in areas where there are highly concentrated number of lymph nodes like the groin area remember for the for the undergarments and i told you that the that the main amount the majority of your lymph system is in the upper chest area uh, and if you're wearing tight bras or tight uh, garments under there that can lead to an increase in the symptoms that are associated with the toxic buildup in the body because that's the major amount of your lymphatic system. So you're keeping the major amount of toxins in your body. So, you know, it's fine to wear tight fitting clothing on occasion. I'm not saying that you can't do that, but you got to limit the time that those items are worn and you've got to consider changing your clothes when you get home from work or from your social gathering or whatever to get into some loose fitting clothing. And you know, isn't it great? I mean, think about it. You get dressed up to go to a social event and you're looking like, you know, you're a knockout and you're, you're the cat's meow. But you know, when you get home, you take it off and you put on those loose fitting clothes and your body just goes, ah, Oh, it feels so good to get out of that, whatever it might have been. That's your body letting you know that, hey, you know, you're doing the right thing, and I appreciate what you're doing for me here. So I want you to, you know, get in the practice of changing into something comfortable when you get at home. I mean, it's in your home. It's your castle, and uh, you need to get cozy. You need to get comfortable, right? Kick back and relax. Another thing to do is eating. You got to eat right for the optimal health because what you eat is going to become what you are because diet plays a significant role in how your body performs. And there's no exception, even when it comes to the lymphatic system. Now, the most important thing then to consider before beginning a new diet is knowing what to avoid, not what to eat, but rather what not to eat. Here are some of the foods you want to consider eliminating if you want to have or enjoy optimal lymphatic health. You want to start to reduce and or totally eliminate processed foods. You want to totally or you want to reduce or totally eliminate the bad fats. You know, the, the trans fats. Oh, my God. Those man-made fats. You want to get rid of that garbage. Um, you might consider reducing 
again, uh, we're totally eliminating grains from your diet and reducing meats. Now look, I, I like grass-fed beef. I like grass-fed poultry. I like fresh-caught or wild-caught fish. I like those meats, and I encourage my patients to eat those, uh, those healthy meats. But I don't want you to get into a rut where you eat them every day. Every day you're eating red meat, red meat, red meat. You know what I mean? You, you eat it for lunch, you eat it for dinner, and then you have the leftovers. Then I, you got to have variety and you got to mix it up. So you got to reduce that amount. I'm not saying eliminate it, but you want to reduce the amount if, you, if you're one of those people that do uh, are heavily engaged in doing that. And instead, what you want to do is to try to focus on eating foods like vegetables, especially leafy greens, the dark green leafy vegetables. You want to eat healthy fats like coconut oils, uh, olive oils, avocados, macadamias, the fats you get from, from certain fish, uh, Atlantic salmon, uh, mackerel, anchovies, uh, sardines, herring, those are real good fatty fish. I'm not talking about those other, I'm talking about these fatty fish because these are really good fats for you, okay? And uh, that's, what, that's what you might wanna consider doing. You know, you wanna eat for those reasons here, okay? And then you wanna manage your elimination process. Yeah, I'm talking about, you know, what goes in must come out. Well, you want, after you put it in, you gotta get it out. So when you're making changes to your diet, it's a good idea to have a strategy you know, in place that's going to help you the first few days as your body starts its detox. Because when you're making a change like that, you're working now with the body instead of against the body. And now the body goes, oh, gosh, we've waited so long. Now let's get rid of it. You've turned on the light, so to speak. It realized what it's harboring. And now it's, it wants to get rid of it. So the best way to start like a new diet routine, you know, is on a weekend. That's the best way to, and the best time to do it. Or, you know, sometime where you don't have to take, uh, where you don't have too many obligations, I should say, you know. So this is helpful to reduce your exposure to the foods that you're trying to avoid. Also, it does that. And it's beneficial to have the downtime in case, you know, you feel the effects of sugar detox. If you've been one of those eating a lot of processed foods or sugars, you might get some headaches. You might get some result, uh, withdrawal pains, you know, um, that, that could be not only the headaches, but you might get grumpy, moody, or you might have intense cravings. You might even get like flu-like symptoms. That happens too when you're detoxing. And once you feel more able, you want to do some moderate exercise. You know, just start moving around because that's peristalsis. That's starting to move the bowels. And that's a great way to expedite, to speed up that detox pro uh, process. Also, you want to make sure at this time that you're drinking plenty, plenty of water. Okay? Because that's going to help to soften that load and uh, the body to get rid of it as well. So now that we're into that, let's talk about a nutrient-packed breakfast. That's going to jumpstart your day. Now, you know, you heard that breakfast is the, is the most important meal of the day. And, you know, I, I don't know if it's the most important meal uh, of the day. And when you think of breakfast, you think of morning. When I think of break, breakfast, I'm thinking of breaking the fast. So for me, Personally, breaking the fast could be at one or two or three o'clock in the afternoon. But anyway, it, it is going to be very, very important. It's going to be how you set the tone for the rest of your eating day. So you want to start with something that's nutrient dense or nutrient rich because it's the best way to go. So, uh, you know, you might consider some fruit salads, uh, spinach, avocado smoothies or smoothies, we have patients that come to us and we have um, green mixes, we have, uh, there, there are great ones to get. So look, I, I don't wanna get into too much of a detail here. If you do have questions about it, if you're not familiar with these types of um, uh, organic uh, nutrient dense mixes or whatever, please feel free to contact our office. You can email us, uh, I'll tell you what the email address is, 
and I'll give it to you at the end of this uh, at the end of this presentation as well. But you want to email us at office at pro-activewellness.com. Again, the address is office at pro hyphen or dash, whatever you like to call it, activewellness.com. Send your questions to us. Send, uh, you know, say, hey, I, I watched the presentation. I'd like some advice or what are you using in your office or how can I get what you use in your office? We'll be more than happy to help you out with that, okay? Then after you got the breakfast, you want to go with a, with the next meal, which many people would call a healthy lunch, right? And the best way to make sure you stay on track is to have your lunch prepared, especially if you work outside of the house. You want, excuse me, you want to have those lunches prepared beforehand so you're not just in, in a state of desperation trying to figure out when you go to a fast food place what's the best thing on the menu to eat. You know, um, uh, boy, there's romaine wedges with sardines and caramelized onions. Oh, it's, it's, don't, don't make a face. It's real, really delicious. Uh, roasted cauliflower, potato curry soup. I mean, there's all kinds of things. And for this, I'll give you a website you can go to, and it's a very good one. It's called eatingwell.com. It just like it, it's E A T I N G W E L L dot com. They've got a lot of outstanding uh, recipes on there that you can go ahead and knock yourself out with. And as I said, when you get these recipes, make them up beforehand so that you're not caught in a bind trying to make a decision on the spot. And, and just think how good you're going to feel after you try these lunches uh, over something that's, that's packaged or processed. I'm telling you, there's a world of difference. And you know something else? It's a powerful uh positive motivator for you because you know you're doing something you're engaged in helping yourself out and i gotta tell you that that's a great feeling it really really is it's very very edifying that you know you're on the on the right path and you're doing the right things and you should enjoy the victory that you have there all right now the dinner choices because you want to feel good about your dinner choices as well now and with this too, a little preparation and smart food buying, your, di your dinner doesn't have, or if you call it out here, uh, uh, you don't, you don't, if it's a supper, you call it, it doesn't have to be a stressor. Uh, and, and again, you can go to Eating Well. They've got a lot of great recipes there. The orange sesame salmon with quinoa and broccoli. Oh my gosh. Uh, or the roasted root vegetables over lentils with greens. I mean, it just, I, I got to stop because I'm going to get myself hungry here and then I'm going to get up and not finish this uh, presentation because that's the kind of guy I am. But for your benefit, I'm going to stick around. Remember now, eatingwell.com, all kinds of great recipes there. Now, also, now that you've eaten the three meals, what about the snack attacks, right? Hey, I understand. I live in the same world you do but I don't want you to lose track of your objective when a snack craving hits. You know, we don't want to blow it at that time. As with any other meal, the best way again to achieve the success and the victory that you want to have, that you deserve to have, is always to be prepared. Uh, that's our mantra, proactive wellness. You got to be prepared. Do it beforehand. Don't wait until especially when it comes to snacking. Oh my gosh. You know, when it comes to snacking, we just, we, we throw um, logic to the side, to the wayside and we're driven, you know, by the taste buds. And, and I got to tell you, eating well, they've got, they've got uh, mango date energy bars that you can make for yourself, dried apples or sweet potato chips. Oh my gosh. I, I, again, I, I got to move on and I, I don't apologize. I just, I have to move on here lest I, uh, you know, I'm my own worst enemy here, but you can, you can get those recipes there. You can look them over, pick and choose what, what sounds good to you, make them up, make them up beforehand, even, even two or three days ahead and have them. And, and Osh, you're just, you're off and running in a great way. And to fight the inflammation, 
we do so with turmeric in our office. Now, turmeric is excellent for its naturally occurring anti-inflammatory properties. And those help with the inflammation of the body that can be caused by, and probably have been caused by the stress and the poor diet. Now, I want you to understand it, and I know this is kind of um, academic, but it's not really the turmeric. We use the curcumin, which is the active ingredient, and you have to be very careful in the source, the purity, the potency of whatever you're using, because this is one of the new kids on the block, and everybody under the sun now is jumping to the turmeric, and, and, and in our office, we are, we are very, very um, serious about the potency, the purity, and where we get it from. And what we use, we, you can get it in capsule form, you can get it uh, as an essential oil, it can be even consumed as a, as a nice warm drink, you know, the, the turmeric milk, if you will. And uh, this, there's a great recipe, and it's no, it's not on eating well, you can get the recipe if you if you want to go that route. And look, why not? It's delicious. It's very, very good for you. But I digress. You can get the recipe for this. I believe we got it on epicurious.com. It's a e p i c u r uh, i o u s dot com. Epicurious.com. You can get a great recipe there for the hot turmeric drink, you know. And uh, boy, I'm telling you, if you start putting these things together, well, then you're off and running. I mean, think about it. Add the water, add the exercise with the, with the rebounder. And then after you get past that and you start feeling better, hey, go to um, Planet Fitness or, or whatever gym you have in your area and, you know, enroll in it and start using the, the equipment or start a or get join a running club in your area or start one yourself or do the yoga, the Pilates. And don't forget the breathing every once in a while and the stretching that you do. We talked about the eating with the recipes that you can get off eatingwell.com or the others from the epicurious.com. You know, uh, you do these things, put them together because remember what I said, it's your body. It's your health. It is your responsibility. Don't wait to get sick and then throw yourself at the mercy of some doctor and say, fix me, help me. I, you know, today is the day, now is the acceptable time. You, the body that you live in has been fearfully and wonderfully made. It's always engaged in detoxifying itself. It's always engaged in regenerating itself, in repairing itself, uh, in, in remodeling itself. Oh my gosh. What a privilege it is to live in these bodies. And now this information that I have given you, if you act upon it, it is definitely going to benefit you. I promise you, because I know the body that well. And I know how powerful and potent this information is if it's acted upon. And look, again, if you have any questions whatsoever, I, I invite you to email us at office at pro-activewellness.com. Again, it's office at pro-activewellness.com. And, and I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's in my name, Dr. Robert Bartosh. And, you know, uh, email us with your questions, with your problems, with whatever. We're here to help you out. We can um, share with you the supplements that we use for our patients. They would benefit you as well if you need some help in there. So, so put these things together, and it's going to benefit that the, the, the function uh, of your lymphatic system and the importance of, of the, the health as well and keeping your body healthy so that you can enjoy the best performance of your life. That's what it's all about. So again, I do want to thank you sincerely, earnestly, honestly, and again, congratulate you for having sat through this, for, for setting aside a time not to hear me, but to benefit yourself. 
to benefit you. You've made a quality decision. And if you act upon this, you have uh, indeed impacted yourself and you have benefited yourself for many, many years to come. So again, I humbly say thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing me to share this information with you. And uh, may God bless you. And until the next time we get together, may you be found healthier than ever before. And once again, thank you and God bless.